Hello friends, let us deal with the poem The Thought Fox by Ted Hughes today. Ted Hughes occupies an unrivaled position, a unique position in English literature as the animal poet and uh, critics have hailed him as an outstandingly original genius with an uncanny insight into the animal world. I am not going into much of the biographical details. Let me just concentrate on this aspect of Ted Hughes as an animal poet. Ted Hughes was born in a small town in Yorkshire and right from childhood he spent a lot of time roaming around in the neighboring woods and forests. He had an elder brother with whom he used to go hunting in the woods. And the first duty assigned to him was to go and look for the birds that were shot down by his brother. And then slowly his interest uh, became more keen, his interest in animals became more keen. He was not interested in dead animals, but he was interested in live animals. He, want, he was interested in the essence of what made them what they are. And so he slowly began to feel that um, human beings are also animals and he regretted that we have moved away from our instincts. Animals retain their instinctual life whereas human beings kind of alienated themselves from this instinctual nature of theirs and uh, he was preoccupied with the psyche of man and his relation to nature and animals and so he constantly felt that man has come a long way away from the primitive energies and he finds himself and this moving away from primitive energies makes him an alien in the natural world and Ted Hughes in his poems tried to explore the unpretentious animal life to be one with it and to regain the lost paradise which we had lost because we moved away from the instincts and he wanted to revive the subhuman instincts that lie hidden deep down within each one of us and it is so in all his poems we have animals as characters in each animal he saw something very special he could identify a kind of a likeness or some kind of a trait of human feature, a human characteristic in, he, in the different kinds of animals he saw. And uh, he has written a lot of interesting poems. His first collection, The Hawk in the Rain, is a collection of beautiful poems. You have, must have come across this poem itself, The Thought Fox, which I'm going to do now. And again, you have the poem, The Jaguar, which is again wonderful. And there are so many other popular poems. Hawk Roosting, yes, of course, I shouldn't forget mentioning uh, Hawk Roosting. That is yet another interesting poem of um, Ted Hughes. So today, let us look at this particular poem titled The Thought Fox. Let me read the poem first. And I should also mention that you should uh, listen to the poem being read by somebody. You know, I, I remember having listened to the audio of this poem read by Ted Hughes himself. But then when I looked for it now, I couldn't find it anywhere. But I guess if I spend some more time, I can find it from somewhere. So it was a wonderful experience for me listening to the poem read in the kind of in the in the deep baritone of uh, Ted Hughes himself. So please try to find and listen to that poem. So let me read it to you. The Thought Fox. I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Something else is alive beside the clock's loneliness and this blank page where my fingers move. Through the window I see no star. Something more near, though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. Cold, delicately as the dark snow, a fox's nose touches twig, leaf. Two eyes serve a movement that now and again, now and now and now, sets neat prints into the snow between trees, and warily a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow of a body that is bold to come across clearings, an eye, a widening, deepening greenness, brilliantly, concentratedly coming about its own business. T. 
still with the sudden sharp hot stink of fox it enters the dark hole of the head the window is starless still the clock ticks the page is printed okay a very short poem just uh, six small stanzas each stanza is a quatrain or four lines and um, so this is the situation the poet is sitting up late into the night he is trying to write a poem but unfortunately imagination fails him at least for the time being he is experiencing what can be called a writer's block he has been sitting there with his paper the paper is white a blank paper he has maybe a pen in his hand but no words are coming out there is nothing for him to write on the paper so that is the situation I imagine this midnight moment's forest. So he compares his mind to this forest and he says there is nobody around but yet I can feel the stirrings of something else somewhere close by. Something else is alive. Beside the clock's loneliness. So there is the clock and the hands of the clock are moving. Other than that there is no movement. The poet himself is sitting motionless. and this blank page where my fingers move so the fingers should be moving on the paper but as of now it is kind of motionless and he is just sitting there through the window i see no star so i take it to mean that there is nothing to inspire because a star is always a symbol of inspiration and so he looks out through the window the open window but he doesn't see a star there means there is nothing to inspire him he doesn't get any ideas uh, to write and uh, so there is no spark that can trigger his poem and so he sits there and he becomes more and more aware of the presence of this something else something more near though deeper within darkness is entering the loneliness now here i think i'd better tell you this a uh, fox now he is going to he feels now this something that he is talking about okay let me just go through a couple of lines too before i reveal the secret so something monier is entering the loneliness he says cold delicately as the dark snow a fox's nose touches twig leaf so now he has revealed he says that it is a fox's nose and so the something that was moving towards him coming into that forest of his mind or into the forest itself it is a fox it is cold and it is delicate what is cold actually it is the fox's nose because we know that for all these animals with muzzles m u z z l e s the muzzle is always moist it is wet and so that is why it is cold and it is delicate as the dark snow uh you have the first uh, organ or first part of fox that uh, is shown in the poem is the nose the nose comes first it's got a long nose and then so the no- uh, the nose uh, it's a very inquisitive nose a very curious nose so it touches the twig in the leaf it's kind of sniffing at it and then the next thing revealed is are the two eyes two eyes serve a mo- movement so the eyes are kind of flitting the side and the side so that is another movement that can be noted that now and again and now and now and now so you can feel uh, the movement of the eyes of this animal and the animal it's not just the eyes but the animal itself is moving forward and now sets the neat prints into the snow so as the animal moves forward the paws of the fox it sets neat prints into the white flawless snow and here there is something i would like you to notice you can see how the sentence the last sentence of the previous stanza of stanza 3 and again now and now and now there is no full stop after that sentence it just moves on it continues on to the next stanza now this poetic technique is what is called the enjambment enjambment this is the technique where the thought is not broken or stopped in one stanza but it just flows over to the next we have this feature in many of ted hughes poems we have it again in the next stanza too in all these three uh, stanzas you can see the enjambment technique being carried forward so now the neat prints 
the footprints of this animal is set into the snow between trees and warily, very carefully, cautiously, a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow of a body that is bold to come. So inch by inch the body is revealed and the fox comes very slowly, it's wary because it's looking around to see whether somebody is there, somebody who would threaten its safety. So it comes out slowly and uh, the stumps, stumps are trees, uh, the remains of a tree that has been cut in some places there is just a hollow maybe where a tree had once stood and now slowly amidst the trees the fox has been hiding it and it reveals itself slowly and now the whole body can be seen across clearings an eye a widening deepening greenness so there is a clear space there uh, there is an eye so a widening deepening greenness and the color of the eye is presented as uh, as green and greenness again is a symbol of so many things. Green uh, symbolizes uh, fertility, green symbolizes birth. So here, this uh, the greenness of this fox's eye too, the widening, deepening greenness also symbolizes something. Brilliantly, concentratedly coming about its own business. So purposefully, it knows what it's doing, it walks forward till with a sudden sharp hot stink of fox it enters the dark hole of the head so suddenly so it moves forward very slowly very cautiously and then in one sudden in one kind of an epiphanic moment there is a sharp hot stink of fox so you can see in that uh, that expression sharp hot stink so stink is actually an olfactory sensation it's a smell but it is described as hot something that you can touch and feel the heat so the fox stink it suddenly fills it and it enters the dark hole of the head the window is starless still the clock ticks the page is printed and now the poet looks at the page in front of him and lo it is full means it is it is a poem has has uh, taken its shape a poem is born so here in this poem this particular fox is not an ordinary fox that inhabits an ordinary forest but this is a thought fox and the forest here is the poet's mind and uh, so in this poem as it's, it's said here let me just read a sentence from this book the animal is no ordinary fox of the forest it is a thought fox or more precisely the poet in his forest of the imagination is fused with nature's fox the fox functions as a metaphor of poetic creation so when we say in the beginning of the poem when we see the poet sitting there waiting for some idea to come uh, waiting for some sort of an inspiration and then something comes so what is that something it is his inspiration it is his poetic imagination that is slowly stirring somewhere in the innards of his mind and then slowly it comes out and here the comparison to the fox comes stealthily slowly cautiously the fox come f comes forward and step by step so each print on the white snow symbolizes each letter on the white paper so slowly slowly the poem takes its shape and the greenness of the eyes i told you greenness symbolizes birth it symbolizes fertility here again it symbolizes the fertility of the poet's imagination it symbolizes the birth of this new poem and brilliantly concentratedly so once it starts coming then it kind of comes in a kind of a flash and that uh, epiphanic the poetic epiphany is what he means when he says with the sudden sharp hot stink of fox it enters the dark hole of the head the dark hole of the head is actually the poet's head his imagination it is suddenly flooded by the words uh, and the poem and the window is starless still the clock ticks but he looks so he is aware of suddenly aware of the passage of time and he looks out and they the still i mean he was not even aware of this process it just took him along quite unawares and then he looks down at the paper the blank paper that was in front of him and he sees that the page is printed that a poem has already been written there so it is this uh, procedure of poetic creation that has been explained through this metaphor of the thought fox
beautiful isn't it so uh, uh, most of his poems are small poems little poems not very lengthy but uh, they are so interesting in the way he makes this comparison between two entirely different things the metaphors and similes that he draws between human beings and animals human actions and animal actions so this is yet another very a kind of a stimulating poem uh, a very interesting one and uh, so as i said you should uh, definitely try listening to the poem uh, by t- if preferably in the voice of ted hughes himself so please read and enjoy the poem